guys, it's Brandon Miniman from PocketNow.com, and this is the hardware tour of the Acer DX900, and again, this is one of the very few devices in the world, or ever made, to have two SIM card slots, so you can actually have two phone lines on this device at one time. And in the next video, we're going to talk all about how you actually manage two phone lines from one device. What is it like when someone calls you on one line? What happens if you want a conference? What happens if you want to make a call from line one or line two? We'll talk all about that. But before that, let's talk about hardware. So let's talk a little bit about specifications. This device is running Windows Mobile 6.1 Professional. It has two SIM card slots, but each SIM card slot has different radio frequencies associated with it. So the first SIM card slot is the 3G slot. So it is HSDPA and UMTS with the 850, 1900, and 2100 uh, bands, megahertz bands. And this will actually work with 3G in the US. I'm using AT&T right now. And in my area, 850, 850 megahertz is the band that is used for UMTS. So I am getting HSDPA on this. Now that first SIM card slot will also do quad band GSM and Edge with 850, 900, 1800, and 1900 megahertz. Now the second SIM, SIM card slot does not do 3G. It has just GSM tri-band, so only 900, 1800, and 1900 megahertz on that. The processor is 533 megahertz. It's a Samsung processor. It's got 256 megabytes of flash ROM, but it has uh, micro SD expansion as we'll see plus it has 128 megabytes of SD RAM uh, we'll talk more about specifications on pocketnow.com when we make the post but that should give you an idea of, of what we're talking about here this device also has an accelerometer so that in every screen there is screen rotation and we're going to talk more about that in the software review the design of the Acer DX900 is not very progressive and it's not very sleek. It actually looks like a device that may have been released a few years ago. Um, it doesn't have the clean lines of you know, the Touch Diamond 2 or even the Touch HD. And also, it feels quite hefty in hand. It is not a thin device. It's not a, I wouldn't call it a sexy device. You may disagree, but um, let's, let's take a tour around the device, see what we have here. On the front here, we have the light sensor next to the front-facing video camera. Here's the earpiece, and as you can see a little blink there, there is a status indicator light to tell you if you have a, a new message or if you're charging the battery or something like that. Going down here, we have the call start and call end button. Now, you would think that you may have two sets of these instead of one since there are two phone lines, but it's all done through the software. And then we have a D-pad here, a nice predominant D-pad up, down, left, right, and center. Going off to the other side, we have a volume rocker here next to a record button. And a jack for not, this isn't 3.5 millimeter, this is 2.5 millimeter actually, which is kind of annoying. It's non standard. Not many people use that smaller adapter, but I guess it's better than nothing. Going to the bottom, we have a mini USB port that is used for syncing and charging. On the other side of the device, we have a camera button, a dual action camera button, so it has autofocus. A micro SD slot, which is external and thus hot swappable. That's good. Here's a soft reset hole, and to the right of that is the power on and off button. Flipping over to the back, we have the autofocus camera, which it does indeed have a flash, that's good. And then we have two holes, which make it look like this device has dual speakers, but I doubt that's actually the case. Now, uh, the camera's three megapixels. This is a kind of rubbery coating, so it feels solid in hand. Again, it feels thick in hand, though. If we take off the back battery cover, we see the battery, which is of size 1,530 milliamp hours. And that's pretty much it for the hardware tour of the Acer DX900. Again, the design isn't very progressive and not very sexy, but beauty is in the eye of the beholder. You may disagree on that front. The really interesting thing about this phone is that dual SIM card functionality, which we're going to talk a lot more about coming up in the next review, where we're actually going to test it and show you how it works. That's it for now.